Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black reanimator deck that's looking to cheat either Agent of Treachery or Dracoseth in play as early as turn 4. In case of Dracoseth we get a 7-7 legendary dragon with flying and when Dracoseth attacks it deals 4 damage to any target and 3 damage to each of up to 2 other targets so it can very easily decimate the opponent's board and also win the game very easily. And then our second reanimation target is Agent of Treachery which when it enters the battlefield lets us gain control of target permanent so it can even steal an opposing land like a Field of the Dead for example. And at the beginning of our end step, if we control three or more permanents that we don't own, we get to draw three cards. So if we get to run out multiple Agents of Treachery, we can potentially start drawing a ton of cards. And that's another fun way to win the game. So another reanimation target we could consider in this deck is something like Villas, the 8-8 legendary demon that can draw additional cards whenever we lose life. I prefer to go with Agent and Dracoseth, but if you want to spice it up, you could also fit in a Villas in there. And of course to reanimate these creatures we'll need some reanimation spells. In this deck we opted for 4 copies of Blood for Bones, which is the new addition from M20. As an additional cost to cast Blood for Bones we need to sacrifice a creature, which is why we have all these cheap sacrifice fodder creatures at the early part of our curve. And then we get to return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield and return another creature card from our graveyard to our hand. So we both get to reanimate a creature and also recycle a creature back to our hand, which is quite nice. And a very important interaction to point out with Blood for bones is that you can return from the graveyard to play the very same creature that you sacrificed as an additional cost. So for instance if you already have an agent of treachery in play you can sacrifice the agent to the blood for bones as an additional cost and then reanimate that very same agent to again steal an opposing permanent. So this particular interaction comes up quite a bit and that's an easy way to steal multiple permanents from the opponent without needing to draw multiple agents of treachery. And then the other reanimation spell in a deck is Bond of Revival which is a 5 mana sorcery which has us return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield and it also gains haste until your next turn which is very important alongside Dracoseth. Being able to attack with Dracoseth the turn you reanimate it means you get to basically wipe the opponent's board and get in a ton of damage maybe take out some planeswalkers on the way so that's why the haste is so important on Bond of Revival and why we're playing it over Connive Concoct which otherwise has a bit of upside letting us dig a bit deeper thanks to the surveil but uh, Bond of Revival works great with Dracoseth whereas Blood for Bones works quite nicely with Agent of Treachery so both both creatures have their preferred reanimation spell but of course they work fine with either one. And then looking at the rest of the deck of course we need some cheap sacrifice fodder to sacrifice to the Blood for Bones which is why we have these four copies of Stitcher Supplier when it enters the battlefield or dies we get to put the top three cards of our library into our graveyard. Another important interaction to point out with Supplier and Blood for Bones is that we get to mill three cards with the dice trigger from the Supplier before we need to select a target to reanimate with the Blood for Bones. So if we don't already have a Draco or an Agent we might get lucky and mill it with the top three from the Stitcher Supplier. And of course returning the Stitcher Supplier with the Blood for Bones back to our hand and be able to replay just for one mana is another way to make a cheap chum blocker or set up your future reanimation spells. Then we also have two copies of Fubblethub the Lost which is a 2 mana 1-1 one, one, and when it enters the battlefield it draws us a card so just a nice cantrip and uh, we can also sacrifice it to the Blood for Bones, the ability doesn't prevent us from doing that. And then the final creature we're looking to sacrifice is 4 copies of Tomebound Lich, 3 mana for a 1-3 with Death Touch and Lifelink, and when a Lich enters a battlefield or deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card and then discard a card. So every ability on the Lich is quite useful in the deck, especially the part where we get to draw and discard, because if we have an Agent or a Dracoseth stuck in our hand they're of no use to us, so we need a way to put them in the graveyard to then reanimate them, and that's where the Lich comes in handy. Then at 2 mana we also have the full playset of Chartercourse which lets us draw 2 cards and then discard a card unless we've attacked with a creature this turn. Often we want to be discarding since that's another way for us to put Agent or Dracoseth in the graveyard. Then we also have a one-off copy of Search for Ascanta, which is another way to mill cards from our library into our graveyard and give us a bit of card selection. And then once it transforms into Ascanta the Sunken Ruin, which we can also accelerate by putting additional cards in graveyard with cards like Stitcher Supplier and the various discard effects, we get another way of finding our reanimation spells and our various other non-creature spells. So it gives us a bit of card advantage in the longer grindier matchups. 
And then we also have the full play set of Thought Erasure, which gives us a little bit of disruption. We could be playing some cheap removal spells or sweeper effects to help us out against the early starts of creature decks, but Thought Erasure is relevant against every archetype, and also lets us surveil one, so it gives us another chance of maybe milling an agent or a Dracoseth into our graveyard, which is quite nice. And then last but not least, we have two copies of Quasi Duplicate, which lets us go over the top if we already have an agent of treachery in play, because it lets us create a token that's a copy of target creature we control, and it also has jumpstart, so we can replay it from the graveyard by exiling it and discarding a card from our hand, so it can also help us maybe discard a Drunko Seth or an Agent to set that up, and we can also randomly mill it with a Stitcher Supplier, a Thought Erasure, an Oscanta, or discard it in the early game to a Charter Course or a Lich, and then later still be able to cast it at least once, so it just has a ton of synergy in the deck, and of course once we start copying multiple Agents of Treachery, that's an easy way to get the three stolen permanents to draw additional cards and run away with the game, so Quasi Duplicate helps us go over the top if one Agent is not good enough, and then the mana base is very straightforward, we've got 8 islands, 8 swamps, 4 drowned catacombs, and 4 watery graves, so we don't have any way of hard casting Dracoseth, we could fix that by adding some red lands to the deck, or even a lotus field which can cast Dracoseth all by itself, but I found that just having a more consistent, painless mana base is a little bit better. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. We've got a chart, of course, and a thought racers. Early plays, we're looking to draw into a Drunko Seth or an Agent since we already have the bond, so I think this is a keep. We've got to get a bit lucky with uh, finding one of our reanimation targets, but we've got seven in the deck and we get to have a few looks. And then we'll see here whether we want a thought racer or chart, of course, first. Looks like we might be up against a mono red deck, so I think I will Thought Erasure just to be able to grab something like an early Steamkin, which could otherwise get out of hand. And let's see if that's the case. Alright, never mind. Looks like a Rakdos deck. Uh, they could Butcher us turn two, and they weren't able to cast the Knights on turn one since they didn't have untapped black mana. So yeah, I think taking the Butcher probably buys us the most time here. And don't really need a Swamp. So our opponent doesn't have any removal for something like a Drunk Seth if we can reanimate it. So that's the good news. The bad news is that they could have a pretty aggressive start here. Turn to Vyashino Pyromancer. So I think we want a Charter Course here since there's a chance we can draw into a Stitcher Supplier. And that would be a way for us to cast a Blood for Bones next turn. Instead pick up a bunch of lands so we can discard one of them. And then pass a turn. So we're currently lacking a target for Blood for Bones and we're lacking a creature to reanimate. But yeah, we could be in a bit of trouble. Put on the sides to hit us for two and then shock us to grow the knight. Our only play is just to play a search for Ascanta here. So we pretty much have to mill over Dracoseth or at least an agent to be able to survive here. And well, there's an agent. So that can go to the graveyard, and Drunk Seth the next card. Alright, well, Drunk Seth would have been quite a bit better than Agent here, but uh, we got a Bond here to stay alive. And the next turn we can Blood for Bones to maybe be able to uh, replay the Agent a second time. So what am I stealing? It might just be the Judith. And then I don't think I'm gonna attack with Agent, keep it back as a blocker. So now Agent can block Pyromancer and Judith can jump in front of Knight of Ebon Legion if we want to. Decides to just attack with the Knight, makes sense. I don't think we can take it, otherwise we die to a shock if they pump the Knight as well. I guess we'll just chum block with the Judith here and then finish off the Pyromancer. Another knight, and they can play the spawn of mayhem as well. All right, charter course on top. I think we want to keep that, and now we can cast charter course, discard Drunkoseth, and then reanimate Drunkoseth with a blood for bones, putting agent back into our hands. Is that good enough to survive? I don't think it is, since we'll just have a Drunkoseth. Spawn of mayhem puts us to seven, and then they can just uh, pump one of the knights that goes unblocked. 
and we would die. But I guess I still start with the charter course here. All right, quasi duplicates. That's interesting. So how about I discard Dracoseth, and then I can just quasi duplicate the agent of treachery, stealing spawn of mayhem. And then do I play the lands? I guess I might as well. No attacks. And then next turn we could Bond of Revival Dracoseth to wreak havoc. And yeah, opponent just concedes, since just a quasi duplicate by itself would do some work, so that was a close one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a fine opening hand. We don't have any reanimation target yet, but between Fibblethup and the Lich and the Ascanta, we get a ton of card selection to try and find one. And then we have the Sacrifice Fodder in case we find a Blood for Bones. Quasi Duplicate to pick up. So that's also a card we can easily discard in the early game. Opponent with Pelt Collector into Thorn Lieutenant, so a red-green beatdown deck here. Alright, there's a Blood for Bones. I think we'll play Fibblethup since we might want to chum block here just to buy a bit of time. Fibblethip, a bit of a nombo with Quasi Duplicate since it is a legendary. But the other option here would be Dusk Legion Zealot, which costs us one life. And the life loss definitely matters since we need all the life we can get to stay alive long enough to be able to reanimate and then take over. Alright, Domri. So that's a scary start from our opponents. Makes mana. Do they also have something else? Just attacking for six. So we could chum block. Uh, next turn the Lich could die to the fight from Domri, although then they would also lose a creature. Could die to removal spell. So we might want to save the creatures for Blood for Bones. And we could s save more damage in the future with Fibblethup. Once the Pult Collector grows. So I think for now I'll take it. And then I'll play the Lich. Alright, there's Rakusath. Discard that, so if we get lucky, next turn we could cast a Blood for Bones and get uh, Dracoseth in play, which would be quite strong, since I don't think the Gruul deck has an easy way of answering a Dracoseth here, but we'll need to draw land. Opponent fights Fibblethup with the Thorn Lieutenant, so they could try and kill all our creatures so we don't have a target for Blood for Bones. It's gonna be a Gruul Spellbreaker pumping Pelt Collector instead. And attacks with both, so we would be taking 7, falling to 5. Then on my turn, I probably can't even afford to attack with a Lich, because their opponent could block fearing a Blood for Bones. So it would um, still be at 5, and would reanimate a Dracoseth, but Dracoseth as a lonely blocker wouldn't be enough to keep us alive. Maybe that means I just need to trade off here, and then hope to Bond of Revival Dracoseth on 5 instead. Alright, Stitcher Supplier, not bad. So, three cards in Graveyard currently. So if I play Stitcher Supplier and Ascanta, next turn I'm guaranteed to flip the search for Ascanta, which is a mana source, but we also kind of need to draw a land in order to cast a Bond of Revival. But I guess I would rather take a guaranteed land and an extra look at the land with Ascanta over just casting a Charter Course here. Even though if we Charter Course and then um, draw into a land, we could also play Ascanta, but the Supplier being a chum blocker is actually quite relevant here. So yeah, let's Supplier plus Ascanta, and then hopefully with the two looks we get from Ascanta and our draw step, we can find a land. Since the Supplier is um, happy to chum block, if we don't have to chum block with the Supplier, we could also Blood for Bones, but again, that might not be good enough. Another Spellbreaker, that's bad news. So... I don't think we're dead on board, since if they minus to fight, they would lose the plus one plus so bonus. But these both trample. So we're forced to chump. Take nine, fall to one. We're dead to a shock. And uh, if there's a land on top, we can keep it, since the Ascanta will flip regardless. All right, come on, land, there it is, a library, transform. 
and Bond of Revival. Drunkaseth. So he can go 4 3 3, attacking Domri. I just realized the Throne Lieutenant will leave behind a 1 1 token, so we're actually dead to the Elf Warrior here from the Throne Lieutenant. Oh well, I didn't think we had a way around it. So, the 1 1 token will get across the finish line here just in time. So yeah, opponent had a nice aggressive start and was still able to beat the uh, reanimated Drakoseth here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is quite solid. We're missing a few pieces, uh, some additional lands or maybe some sacrifice fodder for the Blood for Bones. But the uh, Charter Course and the uh, Surveil from Thotteray sure should help there. So picked up our third land, so just need one more land for Blood for Bones, but that also requires a creature. Two lands for Bond. Up against Blue-Green. No early play, so it could be the Flash deck, in which case if they have a bunch of counter spells, that could be difficult for us. Let's take a look with the Thought Erasure here. It's gonna be a Cutthroat. So it is the Blue-Green Flash deck. Well, their only counter spell is a Sinners of Sabotage. So I think we have to take that. And Island on top. Ideally, we draw a creature next turn, so we can go for the turn for Blood for Bones and not give him the chance of drawing another counterspell. So I think I put that in the graveyard. We're pretty likely to find a fifth land for Bond in time if we don't find a creature. So I want to maximize the chances of finding a creature here. And we could have a chance here. Opponents light on counterspells, heavy on creatures instead. Find a Thought Erasure instead of a creature. So the only chance of Casting a Blood for Bones next turn is if we chart a course into a Stitcher Supplier. We're not super likely to do that, and if we Thought Erasure we at least get to take away the Ambusher, which is the scariest threat from the opponent. So maybe I should just aim for the Bond of Revival here. Opponent will get a few extra draw steps and extra looks at counter spells, but so be it. So yeah, let's cast a Thought Erasure. Decides to run out to Merfolk Trickster, since that might be their only play. And Thrilled Mystic, well, probably gotta take that, since that's another counterspell, leaving them with the Ambusher, which is also not ideal. And a Search for Ascanta would be our next draw. So that's basically another mana source for the turn after, but we don't have a ton of cards in the graveyard, so I think we'll bottom that. Search would be good in kind of a longer grindier game against a more traditional control deck, but uh, not when we're facing a Cutthroat, a Trickster, and potentially an Ambusher soon. There's Drunkoseth, so now we can potentially discard that to the chart course. So let me make sure to play the land in case of a Syncopate or a Quench. And hopefully this resolves. It does. Supplier the draw as well. So I think I would rather have a Drunkoseth than an Agent of Treachery in this spot. Uh, gets potentially punished by Unsummon more than Agent, since at least with Agent we get something right away. But the hope is to bond next turn and then have a hasty Dracoseth demolishing the opponent's board. Which I think is reasonable. And then Supplier as a nice chum blocker here. To keep us alive. So we don't need the Stitcher Supplier for the Blood for Bones. Uh, of course if our opponent has a counter spell for the Bond of Revival we'll need something for Blood for Bones. I suppose we could take 5, since the Supplier can prevent more damage in the future from the Cutthroat. Alright, that makes sense. Opponent did find a 4th land, so they've got one unknown card. So they're likely just flashing the Ambusher, small chance they picked up another Frilled Mystic, hopefully that's not the case. So, yeah, let's go for the Bond of Revival here. Opponent will still have an Ambusher in play, which we can kill with Dracoseth, but we can try and unblock that with the Stitcher Supplier. Alright, opponent picked up a Syncopate, sadly. So, they'll be unable to cast the Ambusher, but that's not what we wanted to see. So if we take 6, I don't think we have a way of surviving, so we probably just have to hope to top deck into another Bond of Revival, and then... Have another hasty Dracoseth. We would fall to six from the Trickster and then four more damage from Ambusher. I'm 
Millover Agent of Treachery. So I guess our only place Fibblethip. Hope to draw land, cast Blood for Bones. Alright. Sacrifice Fibblethip. And Drunkoseth is not good enough here since our opponent gets to flash an Ambusher and at least attack us for six. So we have to get Agent of Treachery back. And then in my hand I'll put the Stitcher Supplier, I think. Fibblethip is maybe even better since I get to Fibblethip plus Blood for Bones again and draw a card. Have all the targets in the graveyard we need at this point, I think. Steal the Cutthroats. Opponent flashes in the Ambusher. And we're not dead on board. But if they top deck another Trickster or an Unsummon, we would be dead. Tax with those. So I think I'm blocking the Trickster here. If they flash in another Ambusher, I'm still only taking five. Fall to two. Opponent makes a Wolf. And a quasi duplicate. Now that's a spicy draw. Yeah, that seems better than going for anything else. Opponent casts an opts. That works. Let's steal this night pack ambusher. And then duplicate again. Target the actual agent instead of the token. Don't think it matters too much. And then probably discard Fibblethip, I guess. Since I could just hard cast another agent next turn. And then this time I'll steal the breeding pool. Make it more difficult for them to cast the Rivers Rebuke, which would potentially kill us. And then do we feel comfortable enough attacking? I think I do. Leave back three blockers, should be plenty. And we get to draw quite a few cards here. So I guess decking now is a concern. What do we discard to hand size? Doesn't matter, opponent scoops it up, so wow. That was another pretty intense game. Alright, we're on the play. I don't think we can keep this hand since we're missing black mana for the suppliers. No way of discarding Agent or Dracoseth. So that's the definition of a mulligan. This hand is quite excellent. I wish we could keep everything. I suppose we don't necessarily need a Stitcher Supplier, since the Lich can just discard Dracoseth and can be fodder for a Blood for Bones, and I think I want the interaction that Thought Erasure gives us here. And then Thought Erasure and Lich can also help us hit land drops. Shard of course is excellent. I think I still go with the Thought Erasure here, try and slow the opponent down. And they've got a pretty redundant hand with a bunch of mana dorks. Cavalier to ramp into. And then a Tamio, which I think is a pick here. Since that would also prevent future discard spells from working. Put Agent in the graveyard, so that's nice. So yeah, we're just looking for a reanimation spell here. Quasi duplicate will be nice once we get Agent in play. Discard Drunkoseth. And then next turn we've got a few options. We can play Fibblethip, plus maybe Chart of course if we find land. Could also Quasi duplicate the Lich. Find the land. So I think I like attacking with the Lich. If your opponent wants to double block, that's fine by me. Get a trigger, draw a watery grave. So I guess the least greedy play here is to discard the Quasi duplicates. So I think we'll do that. And then play Charter Course first, draw two cards. And play Fibblethip. And we've got the Bond of Revival to reanimate a Dracoseth next turn. And that should be pretty good. Cavalier ramps them. Mills over a bunch of Risen Reefs. And another Mana Dork for us to decimate with Dracoseth here. Dr 
Dracus Seth attacks, and I think that's it. We'll keep everything else back since we can actually kill the Cavalier here. So we'll deal 4, 3, 3. Take away as much mana as possible to prevent any mass manipulation shenanigans. And we're not too far from just hard casting the agent as well. It's gonna be Hydroid Crisis. Which also just dies to a Dracoseth attack. There's a land, so next turn we can cast an agent. Uh, for now, I suppose we can just cast this Lich. Nothing I want to quasi duplicate, that's in play. Pick up a lance. And we'll attack. And I think the Lich can attack as well this time. So we'll deal 4, 3, 3. And the opponent doesn't really have a way out. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? It looks decent enough. We've got double stitcher supplier, so lots of looks at potentially milling over Dracoseth or an agent, and we've got the Blood for Bones in hand already. Up against what could be a Merfolk deck. Alright. No great mills with these suppliers so far. And yeah, blue green Merfolk, it looks like. Can probably take a hit from the Biomancer for now, even though I actively want the Supplier to die. Might be able to prevent more damage next turn. For now I'll play Fibblethup. Another Blood for Bones, so plenty of ways to reanimate creatures. Biomancer attacks. Now I think I'll chum block. If I double block, then they can adapt, which isn't great since I still need some creatures in play for the Blood for Bones. Alright, still nothing. Opponent with the Charter Cores to refuel. And a Thought Erasure to take a look. Can't pay for a Spell Pierce if they have it. Alright, this is unexpected. Ugin the Ineffable, not exactly what I associate with Merfolk. Do I still take that? Do I take the Charter Course? Don't really care about the sleep. I guess I'll take the Charter Course. We can probably beat Ugin by the time it comes down. And don't need Water Grave. Play Supplier and then hope to get there. Alright, nothing. So if our opponent decides to cast Sleep, we can Chum Block with the Supplier. But of course we could still sacrifice it to the Blood for Bones, hoping to mill over something useful. And worst case scenario, I can just reanimate another Stitcher Supplier to keep digging. Thanks with the Biomancer. Happy to chum block. And there's Agents, and another Agent. Alright, so now we're in business. We know the coast is clear. opponent decides to adapt anyway. So unless our opponent drew into a spell pierce, we should uh, be able to get an agent in play here. Sacrifice Fibblethip. And agent goes to the battlefields. And to our hands, what do we send? Probably just go for another Stitcher Supplier, so we can play that and Blood for Bones next turn. And then... I could just steal a lance. Don't really care about the Mistbinder too much. Yeah, steal a lance. Make it more difficult for them to deploy their Ugin. Make it easier for us to potentially hard cast an agent in the future. And lands also tend to stick around, so it's easier to get to the three permanents required for agents. Skydiver. Alright, now our opponent does get to potentially get in a pretty big attack. So next turn I'll probably have to steal a Merfolk. So yeah, let's play Supplier. Mill over Dracoseth. Now of course our opponent does have a Sleep. So reanimating a Dracoseth is not actually good enough here. Since then they can just tap down our team and get in a ton of damage. 
So I will still be forced to go for agent instead. Um, now, do we have another agent in the graveyard? Just a one. Since I'm actually considering sacrificing the agent in play, just so I can hardcast another one next turn, I think that's reasonable. So I'll sacrifice the agents and then bring back agents and put one in my hands. And then probably steal the Merfolk Mistbinder here to prevent the most damage. And play this tapped. And then next turn I can play another agent. I'll have three permanents, so I'll start drawing cards with the Agent of Treachery as well. Opponent decides to proliferate. But yeah, opponent just decides to scoop it up. I guess that works for me. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? We need to pick up quite a few lands here before this hand does anything, but technically it has all the pieces we need. So I think we can probably keep this one. Turn one Fairy Miscreant, so this is probably a blue-white flyer style deck. And yeah, we could have difficulty interacting unless we get a Dracoseth out there. But uh, they usually don't have much interaction, so they won't be disrupting our game plan much. It's just that they can potentially deal a ton of damage. Let's go for the Charter Course. Opponent might be holding on to a Spectral Sailor here. Discard Agents. And Triple Bond of Revival, not ideal when it comes to reanimating Agent. Would much rather have the Blood for Bones. Ooh, looks like Jeskai Flyers instead. And gets in for four. And we'll just play the Lich. And I might want to hold on to the Agent, but I might reanimate Agents back to back with Bond. So I think I still discard it here. So they could still have the Spell Pierce in hand, just deciding to try and counter the reanimation spell. Which would probably be game over. Since they're clearly not sandbagging to play around a sweeper effect. So we'll attack with a Lich, since it's not doing anything else. And discard lands. Alright, so if one of these bonds were a blood for bones, we would have been much happier. Now uh, it could be too late. Since we don't have a Dracoseth to reanimate. Alright, let's find out if they have a counterspell. I'll bond main phase, since then I can attack with a hasty agent as well. And yeah, there's a spell pierce that we suspected. So I can attack for one to stay alive. And alright, well, we might still have a shot here if next turn we get to reanimate Dracoseth. But Empyrean Eagle means we're just dead right now. Alright, that's unfortunate. Very close to uh, getting there. Needed one more turn to get back Dracoseth. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And uh, yeah, this hand seems okay. We've got uh, a lot of looks here between the Charter Course and the Surveils to find something to reanimate. We will also need a creature to go with the Blood for Bones, so we actually need two pieces, both the reanimation target and some sacrifice fodder. But uh, hand looks good enough that we can keep. Up against turn one forests, into Lanner Elves. Let's have a look first here. Alright, what is this? Some sort of uh, black-green Fine Finality mid-range deck. I uh, guess we don't want to face the Steel Leaf Champion next turn, so we'll take that here. And Stitcher Supplier is perfect, since that gives us Sacrifice Fodder for Blood for Bones, as well as potentially milling over something to reanimate. And it's going to be a Jade Light on turn 2. Finds one land and a Nissa. Keeps a Nissa on top. So do we want to chart a course or thought erasure this turn besides supplier? Wouldn't mind getting rid of this Assassin's Trophy in case the thing we reanimate is a Dracoseth. So yeah. Let's supplier first and then thought erasure. So that we don't waste the surveil. And 
and then I think take the trophy. Of course, Cavalier could also kill something. But yeah, there's Rakoseth, perfect. They will need triple black for Cavalier. So I suppose Nissa can make it so they can untap a Swamp or a Overgrown Tomb here to make one additional black mana, but we should be able to attack with Dracoseth before they kill it. So it seems like our plan's gonna work out here. Take three. Opponent can cast fine to get back Steel Leaf Champion, that's about it. Does go for it. Not gonna attack first here, just in case they do block. And Quasi Duplicate, not great with Dracoseth, but uh, still nice to have access to. And yeah, let's see if our opponent can top deck an answer here, since we know they don't have one in hand. Plays the Cemetery. If they had one more Black Source, they could play Cavalier, but they don't. So they really don't have any great plays. Whatever they play, we can destroy with Dracoseth when we attack. So their play might just be to do nothing. And it's also going to make it difficult to set up the Cavalier to kill Dracoseth, because they need something to sacrifice. Runs out Nissa anyway. I, that which cannot protect itself. I don't think they want to be reanimating a land here, because then we just get to kill that with the Dracoseth trigger. I guess that saves them a, a bit of damage, perhaps. But yeah, they're kind of in a rough spot regardless. Don't have anything to bond of revival here. So I think the play is just going to be to attack and then shard, of course, to draw two. We'll attack Nissa. Four, three, three. I can help you no longer. Let's see what we can draw. And play a bunch of Stitcher Suppliers. Find Agent that we can reanimate next turn. And we've got the Quasi Duplicate to copy it once as well. So this game seems pretty over. But let's find out. And yeah, opponent agrees. Sweet. Alright, so we had a nice set of games here with our blue-black reanimator deck. And got some pretty clutch wins as well, where we needed to top deck on the very last turn to still get out of it. So yeah, it's a pretty fun deck, can be a bit high variance, sometimes you get the turn 4 Dracoseth, other times you fail to assemble the combo, but I found it to be pretty consistent at uh, doing the reanimation thing, even if sometimes it's too slow if the opponent's on the play and has an uh, aggressive start, for example, since we don't have any main deck sweepers, could be addressed by adding some Rituals of Soot or Crime of the Carnarium to the main deck, but of course that would dilute our reanimation plan a little bit, so I found Thought Erasure to both be a nice interactive spell, as well as helping us with our main game plan of trying to mill over creatures in the graveyard. So even though Thought Erasure is maybe a bit overplayed and it's not uh, always fun to be on the receiving end, it is a nice synergistic card in this deck. And for example, against a blue-green flash deck, Thought Erasure actually gives us relevant interaction, taking away a counter spell that could otherwise counter or expensive reanimation spell, as opposed to a removal spell, which is still useful at killing a cutthroat, but not as good as uh, taking away a key counter spell. So yeah, that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.